Hello everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. In this video, I want to explain how to solve the next three question, which is question number seven until question number nine, from Eju Physics 2019 first session. You can check link on the description box below if you want to watch the solution for the other problem on this paper, or check my Eju playlist for another solution from another paper. Okay, let's start from question number seven. In this question, I have a thermally insulated container that holds a liquid at temperature T1. So I have a container. In this container, there is a liquid. The temperature of this liquid is T1. And then I have a metal ball. The temperature of the metal ball is T2, which is less than T1. So the metal ball is hotter than the liquid. Assume this is the metal ball. The temperature of this metal ball is T2. T2 is greater than T1. And then this metal ball is placed in the liquid. So I put the metal ball in the liquid. After sufficient time, the liquid and the ball reach temperature, uh, reach the same temperature. So at the end, the temperature of liquid becomes, let's say, the final temperature is capital T. So the temperature of the liquid becomes T, and then the temperature of the metal ball is also T. So they both have the same temperature. Let us denote C1 as the liquid heat capacity and C2 as the ball's heat capacity and assume that the transfer of heat only occur between the liquid and the ball. We want to find the quantity of heat transferred from the liquid to the ball. We want to find the heat transferred from the liquid to the ball. If you see from this diagram, we know that temperature of the ball is greater than temperature of the liquid. So, heat will be transferred from the ball to the liquid. Not from the liquid to the ball. Yeah? The heat must be transferred from the higher temperatures object to the lower temperature but don't worry since the question won't ask to find the heat transferred from the liquid to the ball we just put negative sign at the end so I will find heat transferred from the ball to the liquid and then at the end I will put negative sign then I will get heat transferred from the liquid to the ball okay to solve this question, first of all, we have to know Black's principle. So, I will use the Black's principle. Basically, Black's principle is the conservation of energy. Black's principle states that the heat released by an object must equal to the heat absorbed by the other object. In this question, we have two objects. The first one is the metal ball. The second one is the liquid. Since the metal ball has higher temperature than the liquid, then metal ball will release heat. So, Q released by the metal ball must equal to the heat that is released by the metal ball being absorbed by the liquid. So Q or heat released by the metal ball is equal to heat absorbed by the liquid. And then the formula that we use to find the heat is C times delta T. Q equals to C times delta T. Q is 
heat or thermal energy and then C is the heat capacity delta T is the change in temperature so Q or heat release by the metal ball is heat capacity of the metal ball which is C2 times change in temperature of the metal ball initially the temperature of the metal ball is T2 and then the final temperature is T of course T2 greater than T because some of the thermal energy is being released and absorbed by the liquid so the temperature must be decreased that means to find the delta T of the metal ball the delta T is T2 minus T because T2 greater than T so C2 times T2 minus T is equals to the heat absorbed by the liquid heat absorbed by the liquid is the heat capacity of the liquid which is C1 times delta T delta T is the change in temperature of the liquid the change in temperature of the liquid is T minus T1 of course T is greater than T1 because the liquid is absorb sorry the heat sorry the liquid absorb heat by the metal ball the liquid absorb heat by the metal ball that means the temperature must be increased that means T greater than T1 so the delta T of the mat of the liquid is capital T minus T1 C1 times T minus T1 from this equation I want to find what is T in terms of C2, T2, C1, and T1 if you distribute C2 into the brackets and C1 into the brackets you will obtain C2, T2 minus C2, T is equals to C1, T minus C1, T1 let's continue to here so I have more space I want to isolate a uh, capital T. I'm sorry, this is T1, yeah, not capital T, but small t. T1. This is T1. Just isolate capital T. I will get C2 T2 plus C1 T1 is equals to C1 T plus C2 T. You can factorize capital T here. If you factorize capital T, it will become T open bracket C1 plus C2. Then we will obtain capital T is equals to this over C1 plus C2. I will rearrange it, yeah. So I will write it down C1 T1 first. C1 T1 plus C2 T2 over C1 plus C2. This is the final temperature of both object, liquid and the ball, after sufficient time. This is the final temperature. And then we want to find the heat transfer from the liquid to the ball. As I say um, previously, the one that transfer heat is the ball because the temperature of the ball is greater than the temperature of the liquid so if they ask you to find the heat transfer from the liquid to the ball just put negative sign so Q liquid to the ball is equals to Q R the one that transfer or release heat is the ball which is um, QR so Q liquid to the ball is equals to negative QR 
our QR is C2 times T2 minus T. So, negative C2 times T2 minus T. If we simplify this by substituting capital T into this one, then I will obtain negative C2 T2 min minus C1 T1 plus C2 T2 over C1 plus C2 and then simplify this expression into a single fraction we will obtain negative C2 open bracket T2 times this I got C1 T2 plus C2 T2 and then distribute the negative sign we will get negative C1 T1 minus C2 T2 over C1 plus C2 Of course, we can cancel out C2, T2 here. Then I will get negative C2, open bracket, C1, T2 minus C1, T1 over C1 plus C2. Factorize C1, then we will get negative C1, C2, T2 minus T1 over C1 plus C2. Then I think we should distribute the negative sign into the bracket. If I distribute the negative sign, I will get C1, C2 times T1 minus T2 over C1 plus C2. This is my final answer, and the final answer is number 3. Okay, let's continue to the next question. In the next question, we have an ideal gas of equal amount of substance are enclosed inside cylinder A and B. Amount of substance is the number of moles. So, cylinder A, let's say, has number of moles n cylinder B also has number of moles n because they both have the same number of substance and then the cross-sectional area of cylinder A is SA and then the cross-sectional area of cylinder B is SB the cross-sectional area is SA this is SB And then, using smoothly piston, sorry, using smoothly moving piston, A and B are placed facing each other and are fixed in place so that their central axis is horizontal. The two pistons are connected with a rod. This is the rod, yeah. The piston in A come to rest at a distance LA. This is LA. And then the piston B comes to rest at a distance LB. This is LB. Since the two pistons are at rest, so we can say that the pressure from cylinder A or from the gas in cylinder A is equal to the pressure of the gas in cylinder B because the piston are at rest so the pressure must be equal so I can say that the pressure is equal so assume this is P and then this is also P and then the absolute temperature and pressure of the ideal gas inside A is TA and TA and then the absolute temperature and pressure of the ideal gas inside B is TB and PB. I already say that TA and PB are equal since the piston is not moving. 
So the PA and PB is equal. So I write it down as P. But the temperature is different. Temperature in cylinder A is TA. This is TA. And then this is TB. The question wants us to find the ratio of TB over TA. So I want to find the ratio of TB over TA. Since we have an ideal gas, so of course we have to use ideal gas equation. The equation of an ideal gas is PV equals to nRT. P is pressure, V is volume, N is the number of moles, R is gas constant, and T is temperature. PV equals to nRT. Since number of moles in cylinder A and cylinder B are the same, so I can write it down N times R is equals to PV over T. And then I can say that N times R for cylinder A must equals to N times R for cylinder B. Because the number of moles are the same and then R is the gas constant. So N times R for cylinder A must equals to N times R for cylinder B. That means N times R for cylinder A is PV over T for cylinder A must equals to PV over T for cylinder B. Since the pressure is same, so I can cancel out pressure. Then I will get volume in A over temperature in A, VA time over TA is equals to VB over TB. And then I will move TB to the numerator of the left hand side, and then I will move VA to the denominator of the other side. Then I will get TB over TA is equals to VB over VA. Remember that V is volume. So, how to find the volume in cylinder B and volume in the cylinder A? Remember that volume is area times height. So, if you see this as a cylinder, then volume is cross-sectional area times height. So VB is SB times LB. And then VA is SA times LA. Then my final answer is SBLB over SALA. My final answer is number 2. This is for question number 8. Let's proceed to the last question in this video, which is question number 9. In question number 9, we have a fixed quantity, fixed quantity of a monoatomic ideal gas that is enclosed inside a cylinder. As shown in the PV diagram below, the state of the gas is changed in the path state A into state B. So our initial state is A and then change into B. The question wants us to find what is the net quantity of heat absorbed by the gas in the entire process of A becomes B. So we want to find the net quantity absorbed by the gas. 
if we have PV diagram so we have to remember the first law of thermodynamic first law of thermodynamic dynamics the first law of thermodynamic states that the change in internal energy is equals to the heat supplied to the gas plus the work done on the gas I repeat it again ya yeah. the change in internal energy of the gas is equals to the sum of the heat supplied to the gas and the work done on the gas if you see from this diagram PA times VA which is 3POVO is equals to PB times VB 3POVO so PB VB is equals to PA VA when P times V is a constant then according to the Boyle's law this is um, isothermic process Boyle's law states that this is Boyle's law yeah? Boyle's law PV equals to constant so there is no change in temperature no change in temperature no change in temperature means this is an isothermic process for an isothermic process since there is no change in temperature then there is no change in internal energy internal energy for an ideal gas is depend on the temperature since there is no change in temperature that means there is no change in internal energy is equals to Q plus W we want to find Q yeah? Q is the heat absorb or heat supplied to the gas we want to find heat so we want to find Q from this equation Q is equals to negative W W is work done to find work done from PV diagram we just calculate the area under the graph so work done is area below PV diagram since I want to find the work done so just calculate the area of this trapezium so Q is equals to negative area of this trapezium area of the trapezium is sum of the parallel side 3PO plus PO divide by 2 times the height of the trapezium which is 2VO and then I will get 4PO times 2VO I'll cancel out 2 yeah I can cancel out this 2 then I will get 4PO times VO 4PO VO then my final answer is negative 4PO VO so my answer is number 5 okay that's it for this video thank you very much for watching this video till the end and i hope i will see you guys again on my next video thank you and bye bye